This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and look, I'm here with my team. And if you look behind me, you will see the cloud covered peak of Mount Ararat. And we are in the lower mountains of Ararat standing on the probable remains of Noah's Ark. And we've come all the way here to teach a brand new series, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And I've waited years to get here to teach Teach you this series. This is Andrew Jones. He's the local researcher. This is a seal who is my guide that's traveled with me for years all over Turkey. This is William Renner. This is Joel Renner. Back here we have Paul Renner. We have Nikita and we have Maxine and Mark Dogan. And we've all come here to create this new series for you. Again, fallen angels, giants, monsters, and the world before the flood. Well, here I am, my friends, seated on the probable ruins of Noah's Ark. These are the lower mountains of Ararat. The Bible says that the ark rested in the mountains of Ararat, not on the mountain peak called Ararat, but in the lower mountains. And that's what this is. And actually people came to this site for thousands and thousands of years. There are many ancient voices that wrote and recorded information about this very site. And then it disappeared from history. But in 1959, a pilot was flying over this area to take photos of the region because they were going to make new maps of this area. They sent the photos to a cartographer whose name was Durupinar. And Captain Durupinar, when he was looking at the photos, said, what is that? And there before him was a formation that looked just like a ship. So he sent it to a very important professor in the United States. And when he examined it, he said, hey, this is a ship in the mountains of Ararat. And from 1959 to the present, this site has been studied and studied and studied. Just recently, 39 ETR scans were made of this site. These are electric signals which penetrate the ground to show what is underneath this big boat-shaped object. And those scans revealed that underneath where I am sitting, there are rooms. This is not a natural formation. My friends, this is a man-made object which exactly fits the dimensions of Noah's Ark as given to us in the Bible. 300 cubits long, which is 515 feet. That is precisely the dimensions of this boat-shaped object. And I've come here to teach you a brand new series about why God sent the flood. Why did he do that? We're going to find out, and it's going to be wonderful in this first of 15 parts of this series. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner, my friend. I've been waiting for you, and today I'm beginning a brand new series that I have been wanting to teach for years and years and years. And as you saw in the introduction to today's program, I even went to the mountains of Ararat to capture video for you to see the ruins of Noah's Ark. And today, this new series is called, are you ready for this? 
fallen angels, giants, monsters, and the world before the flood. It is 15 parts, comes with a study guide. My friend, this is a series that is going to thrill you like it has thrilled me. And we're also offering you a book today by Dr. Dennis Lindsay. I read this book from cover to cover in one setting. I found it to be absolutely riveting. And the name of the book is Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. And the back of the book says, have tribes of giants ever walked this earth? Hmm. Are aliens actually fallen giants? Who are the Nephilim and are they returning to the earth? This is a book that you will devour and you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you because we really are people of prayer and we want to pray for you. Jesus said that if two of us would agree as touching anything, he would do what we ask. And when you reach out to us, we'll get into agreement. Jesus will hear our prayers of agreement and Jesus will do something spectacular for you. But either call us or write us or go online to let us know how to pray for you. But reach for your Bible. And today we're beginning this brand new series, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And we're going to begin in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. Now, what you're going to hear today is very foundational to everything else we're going to be covering in these 15 parts of this series. And to the best of your ability, please be with me through all of these programs. My friends, I know that what you're about to hear is going to thrill you and much of it will be revelation that you've never heard in your life. But today I want to ask how many people were on the earth at the time of the flood? How many people were on the earth at the time of the flood? We're going to answer that by beginning in Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. And when we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female, created he them, and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. By the way, that's very important. The Bible says he called them by the name Adam. It shows what unity there was in their relationship, in their marriage, from the beginning before sin came. And my friends, that's the ideal that God wants for your marriage as well. But then in Genesis chapter 5, verse 2, the Bible says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Then verse 3, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And then in verse 4, the Bible tells us, And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and, listen to this phrase, and he begat sons and daughters. Many, many, many sons and daughters. And here's what it means. In addition to the names of the children of Adam and Eve, which we read in Scripture, there were many other sons and daughters that are not specifically named in the biblical account. You say, well, how many sons and daughters? did he have? Well, you're going to find out today, by the time we get to the end of this program, that it is likely that Adam saw at least a million of his own descendants. That is amazing. When they exited the Garden of Eden, they had a vast number of sons and daughters. But when you come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible continues to say, and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. So Adam lived 930 years. Then we read in Genesis chapter 5, verse 6, and Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. So he had his first son when he was 105 years old. And Genesis 5, verse 7 says, and Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years, and he also begat sons and daughters. It doesn't specify how many, but we understood it was a multitude of sons and daughters. Then in Genesis chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. So Seth lived 912 years. Then in Genesis chapter 5, verse 9, And Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan, verse 10. And Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and 
daughters. Again, the number of sons and daughters are not specified, but we know it was a multitude of sons and daughters. Then in Genesis chapter 5, verse 11, the Bible says, And all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. So Enos lived to be a 905 years old. Then in Genesis 5 verse 12, the Bible says, And Canaan lived 70 years and begat Halaliel. And then in verse 13, And Canaan lived after he begot Halaliel 840 years, and here you have it again, and begat sons and daughters. Again, the number is not specified, but we know it was a vast multitude of sons and daughters. Then in Genesis 5, verse 14, the Bible says, And all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. So he lived 910 years. Then we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 15, And Mahalaleel lived 60 and 5 years, and begat Jared. Now, when we come to the name Jared, it's very, very important because it was during the days of Jared that angels who were called watchers, whom God had set into the earth in order to watch over man and to help man, they began to cohabitate with women and produce giants. And all of that began in the early days of Jared. That is this Jared, which is now mentioned in Genesis chapter 5, verse 15. But in verse 16, the Bible says, and Mahalaleel lived after he begat Jared 830 years, and he begat sons and daughters. You see, this phrase is repeated again and again and again. It never specifies the number of sons and daughters, but we understand it is a multitude of sons and daughters. And then Genesis 5.17 says, And all the days of Mahalaleel were 895 years, and he died. So he lived to the ripe old age of 895. And then Genesis 5.18 continues. And Jared lived 162 years and begat his son whose name was Enoch. And Enoch is very important to this teaching about fallen angels, giants, and monsters, and the world before the flood. But when you come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 19, it says, And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years, and guess what? He begat sons and daughters. And again, the number is not specified, but we understand it was a vast multitude of sons and daughters. And finally, we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 20, which says, And all all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. So he lived to be 962 years old. And then you come to Genesis chapter 5 verse 21 which says, And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. I'm sure you've heard the name Methuselah. Methuselah was the oldest man that ever lived in the flesh. And the name Methuselah literally means when he is dead, then it shall come. His name was prophetic. And what you're going to find out in this teaching today is that Jared and his descendants all begin to prophesy that a judgment was coming to the earth because of this angelic cohabitation with women that was producing giants and and violence in the earth. And the name Methuselah was prophetic, which literally meant when he is dead, then the judgment will come. But Methuselah's father was Enoch, and Enoch had a prophetic awareness that divine judgment was coming to the earth. But when we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says, And Enoch walked with God. Don't you want that to be said about you? What a testimony about Enoch. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years, and here we have it again, and begat sons and daughters. And again, it doesn't say how many sons and daughters, but we understand that Enoch had a plethora of children, many, many, many sons and daughters. And then when you come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 23, the Bible says, And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, but that is not entirely correct. Because the next verse goes on to say in Genesis 5, verse 24, And Enoch walked with God. Oh, don't you want that to be said about you? But then it continues, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. This is the first recorded rapture in 
the Bible. One day Enoch was walking with God and God said, you know, Enoch, I just want you to come with me. And God took him. He literally vanished. He disappeared. It is the first recorded rapture in the Bible. And it occurred with a man that was walking with God. Now, my friends, the rapture is going to occur for us in the near future. Let's make sure that we walk with God so we qualify to be raptured when that moment comes. The Bible says he was 365 years at the moment that God took him. However, he never died in the flesh. This is an individual who went to heaven as a man in mortal flesh, and he is still in heaven as a human being, a mortal in heaven ever since that time, which would mean Enoch is the oldest living individual that has ever lived, and he is still alive in his human body in heaven. He was 365 years when he departed, but he's still alive. That is amazing. But Enoch had a very unique relationship with God, and he's considered to be the first prophet in the Old Testament, and he's quoted all over the New Testament. I'm going to be showing this to you. We even know that he's quoted in the book of Jude, and it's amazing that in the very outset of time, Enoch was so spiritually tuned to prophetic things that he saw the end of the ages. He saw clear to the end of the ages to time that is still in front of us. And he prophesied what would occur at the end of the age, and those prophecies are recorded in what is called the book of Enoch. Now, I'll be coming to the book of Enoch in just a moment. But what he prophesied and what was written in the book of Enoch was considered to be so correct and so authoritative that Jude actually quotes it. So when you come to Jude, verses 14 to 15, Jude is quoting Enoch from the book of Enoch, and Jude says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Imagine, at the very outset of time, Enoch was so spiritually sensitive and so close to God that he wasn't able to see the very end of the age when the Lord would come with us. He saw the coming of the Lord with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And here we find that Jude is quoting Enoch from a passage in the book of Enoch. And we'll be coming to what is the book of Enoch in just a moment. But then we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 25, and the Bible speaks and says, And Methuselah, that is the son of Enoch, lived 187 years and begat Lamech. And Genesis chapter 5, verse 26 says, And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 702 years. And guess what? He begat sons and daughters. My friends, all of these individuals had a massive amount of sons sons and daughters. The Bible never specifies how many, but we know it was a multitude. And then when you come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 27, it says, in all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. He lived 969 years, the oldest individual to live a full life in the history of mankind. And when he died, it signaled that judgment would come. That's what the name Methuselah meant. When he dies, it shall come. But God kept Methuselah alive longer than anybody else because he was giving people a possibility to repent before the judgment came. But finally, we come to Genesis 5, verse 28. And the Bible says, Lamech lived 182 years and begat a son. And the name of that son was Noah. This means, amazingly, Noah was born only 14 years after the death of Adam's son, Seth. That is amazing. It's amazing to think that Noah could have known and he could have spoken with some of Adam's grandchildren. And not only that, since Adam and Eve for years and years and years and years continued to have sons and daughters, it is very likely that Noah was able to speak with some of the unnamed sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. I think that is amazing. But finally, we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 29, and the Bible says that Lamech called his son's name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work 
and our toil of hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Then in Genesis chapter 5, verse 30, and Lamech lived after he begat Noah 595 years and begat sons and daughters. There you have more sons and daughters. And finally we read in Genesis chapter 5, verse 31, and all the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. So Lamech lived 777 years. And then finally we come to Genesis chapter 5, verse 32, which says, and Noah was 500 years old and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. So Noah was 500 years when he and Mrs. Noah started their family. 500 years when his first son was born. But let me go through a, a several of these names for a moment. Jared was living at the time that the watchers or the angels began to cohabitate with women and produce giants. He was the father of Enoch and Jared was the great, great grandfather of Noah. Enoch was the father of Methuselah and he was the great grandfather of Noah. Methuselah means when he dies, it will come. He was the father of Lamech and he was the grandfather of Noah. Lamech was the father of Noah. And finally we come to Noah, which means comfort or rest. But in this chapter, everyone except Enoch lived over 600 years. Methuselah amazingly lived 969 years and it's very evident that people live much, much longer lives before the flood. And there are two possible reasons for this. Number one, it could be because of the degenerative effects of the fall on the human gene pool. Or number two, they may have lived longer lives because the atmosphere of the world was different at that time. The environment in the pre-flood world was so different because there was a blanket of water that surrounded the earth, which allowed things to live longer and to grow larger. But during this period, the world was populated very, very quickly. And if Adam, during his lifetime, saw only half of the children he could have fathered grow up, and if only half of those got married, and if only half of those who got married had children, then at a conservative rate, Adam would have seen more than a million of his own descendants. That is amazing. Then you add all the other kids that were born, so that by the time that you come to the flood, there were several million people. Now, in this series, we're going to be dealing with the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch is a collection of writings that are very, very ancient, and the earliest parts of the book of Enoch are attributed to Enoch himself, where he recorded a revelation that he received from God and recorded things that he witnessed. Though the book of Enoch is not considered scripture, it is considered very significant, serious commentary, so serious that it was quoted by Paul, it was quoted by Peter, it was quoted by Jude, it's even quoted by Jesus. Though it is not scripture, it is very serious commentary. And during the time that Jesus was alive, it was a very popular book and rabbis took the book of Enoch very seriously. So in this series, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about what is recorded in the book of Enoch. But in the next program, we're going to see who are the sons of God. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, don't miss it. It is going to be riveting. But I'll be back in just a moment. Finally, Rick Renner has unlocked the mystery surrounding the sons of God and the giants that appeared in the earth before the flood during the days of Noah. To film this riveting series, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, Rick and his team traveled to Eastern Turkey to the ruins of Noah's Ark. In this series, Rick dives deep into the scriptures to give you answers about who are the sons of God in Genesis 6, 1 and 2? What does the promise of 120 years really mean? Where is the real location of Noah's Ark today? Rick says, this is the series I've wanted to teach for decades. With the research we conducted at the real Noah's Ark, along with amazing historical records, I believe this long-awaited series will answer a multitude of questions for people who have wondered about the strange events that occurred before the flood and what Jesus said about them being repeated at the end of the age. This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $24. In addition, we're offering Dennis Lindsay's astounding book, Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. This book will amaze you and open your mind to mysteries hidden in the Bible that have great impact on our world today. This book can be yours for $20. Don't delay. 
Order this bundle of the 15-part series, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, and the book, Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and I'm standing outside the new TV studio in Moscow. Praise God, most of the interior is already finished. They're still working on Denise's studio, so pray for us as we continue, it's gonna be nice. And if you see the big bulldozer behind me, that's because they're getting ready to do the parking lot. You know, winter comes pretty early in our part of the world, so we need to really seize the moment and get this parking done before the cold weather sets in. But hey, we're making progress and praise God, the studio is paid for. This is all paid for. And I wanna say thank you for being the most amazing partners and helping us with this. And now the project in front of us is to pay off the Tulsa facility. We want to retire the debt on the big office complex in Tulsa because when that's paid off, suddenly all those finances are gonna be released for us to go on more TV and minister to people all over the world. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about joining us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. It's not about buildings. It's just about having the space we need so that we can effectively minister to people. We want to retire that debt so we can take the Word of God to more parts of the world where people are crying out for teaching they can trust. And I want to say thank you for everything you do. I want to say thank you for being with me today. I'm doing my new series, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And in this 15-part series, you're going to hear things you've never heard in your life. And my friends, you need to hear it and hear it and really study it. And that's why I want you to get the whole series, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, which comes with a study guide and this is a study guide you're going to devour because it is loaded with revelation and information. And we're also offering you Dr. Dennis Lindsay's marvelous book, which I read from cover to cover in a single setting. And the name of the book is Giants, Fallen Angels and the Return of the Nephilim. Ay, 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 this book is absolutely wonderful. But friend, you can order all of these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And when you reach out to us, would you please tell us how we can pray for you? If you've ever called us before, you know that you don't leave us without really being prayed for. And we will release our faith, we'll pray with you, and God will do something miraculous and wonderful in your life. But hey, I want to pray for you right now. Father, we thank you for the wonderful Word of God that contains so many answers for us. Help us as we delve into the Scripture to more fully understand what took place in the days before the flood. And Father, I speak a blessing on the life of every one of my friends. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be great. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.